Skill exercises are the source of a lot of problems. I remember running into this myself when I was starting out, and I also hear about it often from students. You practice a lot of exercises, but is it really helping you play better, or are you just repeating the same exercises without getting anywhere? For me, there were some exercises that really were game changers in learning jazz, simply because they could do more than just teach me how to play an arpeggio or a scale. What is maybe a little bit weird about them is that they're not all the type of exercise that you work on every day for months with a metronome. There are other things that you need to learn besides technique, and there are other ways to practice than just using a metronome. One of them is also a very powerful and practical way to build a fretboard overview. With a build-up like this, then it's maybe a bit of a disappointment that the first exercise is practicing the scale, since you're hopefully doing that already, and you're probably trying to not sound like you're playing scales when you're solo and want to develop your musicality. As you will see, it will serve as a foundation for pretty much everything else in this video. Just make sure that you start with the major scale in one position before adding other positions and other scales. Gradually get around to all keys so that you get flexible with that. Don't just play them mindlessly, but try to make them sound good and be aware of what you're playing. There is a video of Pat Metheny turning scale practice into music, which I think is very inspiring for this. The next exercise is the logical extension of practicing scales, and also what I often refer to as the most important exercise for jazz. But remember that if you're practicing scales, then it only takes a short amount of time to go over a key in all positions. And you can set up systems so that you get through all keys over a few days. It shouldn't take hours of practice every day to work on scales, because you also need to play music when you practice. As you will see with the rest of the exercises, then it's important to connect things, not only the scale, arpeggios and vocabulary, but also chords. You'll see what I mean. I learned this exercise the first time I went to a Barry Harris masterclass in The Hague, and it was an exercise that changed everything about how I practiced and made it all much closer connected to the music that I wanted to learn to play. Bebop. To me, the goal of all these exercises is to help you play better jazz. And this exercise is actually a direct link to the music. And I think it's crazy that not everyone teaches this to their students. Diatonic arpeggios, I guess it sounds difficult, but it's pretty simple. If you play the scale in a position, then you can play a seventh chord arpeggio for each note in the scale by essentially just stacking thirds. For C major, if you start on C, then you build a seventh chord by stacking thirds like this. So from C up to E, up to G, up to B, then you have C major 7. Or from D, D, F, A, C, that gives you a D minor 7. And in that way you have C major 7 arpeggio and a D minor 7 arpeggio right there in the scale. You can probably tell that there are obvious technical benefits to working on this exercise, but if you're also aware of what notes and what arpeggios you're playing, then you're really connecting some very important information on the guitar to the chords that you want to solo over. Doing this exercise makes it possible for you to take a jazz standard and play arpeggios through the entire progression, which is a great beginning for internalizing a song and having a place to start with soloing over it, where you take an arpeggio and build a phrase around it. Besides being a very solid foundation for improvising over chords and learning songs, then it will also give you a lot more material, because if you analyze transcriptions of great jazz musicians, then you will find a lot of other arpeggios being used besides the arpeggio of the chord itself. And you are completely ready for doing that in your own playing if you work on this exercise. Take a look at how this line uses other arpeggios over the chords. Let's look at some exercises that are not just regular exercises, but also incorporate some chords before getting to vocabulary and fretboard overview. When you're playing jazz, then you're both playing solos and chords because you're not soloing all the time. And you can practice chords and scales as well, which for me was a very useful way to work on exploring new voicings, getting familiar with the diatonic chords, and also how their extensions sound and how they work. You can even do chords in a scale position. This exercise is actually possible with all types of chords, but the most basic version is probably a good place to start, and that is to go through the major keys using shell voicings. If you know your major scales well enough to know the notes in there, then this can be a great exercise since it's not always practical to start on the root. For example, if you want to play diatonic chords 
in C major with the shell voicings that have the root on the sixth string, then you can't really start on C and F or E is a better option. You can also explore doing this in a position, but that's not going to be useful for that many types of voicings. But it is a nice exercise for the shell voicings. Now you have the scale linked to both arpeggios and chords, so let's connect it to the notes that are not in the scale, since they're actually a part of the picture in jazz as well. This exercise is such a simple concept, but when I first came across it, then it immediately resonated with me and it really sounded like jazz already as an exercise. Of course, this comes from how frequently it's a building block in jazz solos and especially bebop lines. When I was first given this exercise, then I'd already heard it thousands of times in the solos of Charlie Parker, Pat Martino and Wes Montgomery. So playing it really just made that click into place and gave me tons of phrases to use in my own solos. I am, as you may have guessed, talking about the bebop arpeggio exercise, which I've also mentioned in other videos. And this was also one of those exercises that I learned the first time I went to a Barry Harris workshop in The Hague. The exercise is simple. You play each diatonic arpeggio as an eighth note triplet and add a leading note in front of it. But it's also a great example of an exercise that is already vocabulary, something you can use in countless lines. And actually, I think that really illustrates why Barry's method is so powerful. It's based on making exercises that are already solo lines, like this. With chromaticism, then obviously this is just the tip of the iceberg and you can do so much more with adding chromatic notes or even chromatic phrases to arpeggios and intervals and they will all be good exercises. In fact, any vocabulary that you like is probably worth taking apart and turning into exercises. Most of them will not be used as often as this one in solos, but they are still fun and useful to explore. You can let me know in the comments if you want a link to a playlist with some of the Barry Harris videos that I've done that go deeper into his method and his system for chromatic notes. I remember when I was starting out learning jazz and with a lot of the songs that I could solo over, then there would be chords where I didn't have the freedom to move around on the neck. I was kind of like stuck in a single position. And if I'd been given this exercise, then that would have developed a lot faster than it did. In fact, this is probably the most practical and efficient fretboard knowledge exercise that you can work on. The idea of learning a phrase and taking it through all 12 keys isn't usually considered a scale exercise, but it really is a great exercise for your overview of the scale, and it will help you get better at finding the things that you want to use in your solos on the instrument. Now, of course, Phrases don't always fit in a single scale, but then the different scales that are in that phrase anyway go together in the music. So linking them up is incredibly useful. There are two ways that you can approach this, which are different takes on the geometry of the guitar. For this, I will stick to a relatively short phrase, which is a pivot arpeggio and an also dominant line, giving you this. The first variation is the traditional approach. So take the phrase through all 12 keys. And yes, for stuff like this, the whole 15 or 30 keys or whatever that was doesn't really make any sense. So 12 keys. Theory is easy. It's not hard. For this one, I'm going to focus on staying around the same area of the neck. It probably won't make sense to insist on staying completely in the same position. Instead, the priority should be to stay in the same area while keeping it playable and also possible to play it with decent phrasing. It's much more useful to be practical. We are not all playing in bands like ACDC, where 85% of all the songs are in the key of A. This is a great exercise for your playing, fretboard overview, ear training and vocabulary. It is good for a lot of things. The guitaristic version of this is also really worthwhile because you can also use this to develop the visual skills associated with the guitar and your overview of the neck. As I mentioned in the beginning of this section, then I had a period where I was practicing scales in all positions, but I could only solo in some of them. So what that means is that I could play the scale everywhere, but I didn't have vocabulary in all positions that I could use when I was soloing. 
Taking a simple phrase and then sticking to one key but exploring how to play it in all positions is in a way the guitar version of moving a lick through 12 keys. And that could be an exercise that really opens up new scale positions for you. In fact, I was given this exercise by a teacher later when I moved to Copenhagen and it did indeed quickly start to do exactly that for my playing. This is also the kind of exercise that you can explore doing with the short solos from the book the Joe Pass guitar style to get more out of those examples. Challenge accepted. If you want to explore how you can start playing better lines in your solos, then check out this video and learn from the phrases of Joe Pass, Charlie Parker, and Barry Harris so that you have the right rhythms, the great phrasing, and the right energy in your playing. They are the people that you really want to learn from.